Hello, my name is Jack Zener, and I'm a senior trainer with Stanley Black & Decker University. Now, Stanley Black & Decker is the parent company of DeWalt Fasteners, engineered by Powers. And I'm the DeWalt Fasteners factory authorized instructor for this Potter Actuated Tool training class. Now, this training is designed to prepare you to become DeWalt Fasteners, engineered by Powers, qualified and licensed Potter Actuated Tool operators. Now, powder actuated tools are ballistics tools. They're tools that derive their working energy by harnessing the power of expanding gas. And with regards to DeWalt fasteners engineered by Powers powder actuated tools, that expanding gas comes from 22, 25, or 27 caliber blank powder loads. Now, you should refer to the DeWalt engineered by Powers instruction manual for the caliber of the tool you intend to use. Now, because they're ballistics tools, they can only be used by properly trained and licensed operators. And in order for you to become a DeWalt Fasteners Powder Actuated Tool Operator, you must complete the DeWalt Fasteners Engineered by Powers training program. That's what this video is designed to do. You must satisfactorily complete a short operator exam, and you must answer a few questions specific to the DeWalt powder tool that you intend to use. And you must obtain a DeWalt Fasteners Engineered by Powers specific Certified Operators License Card. You have to do this before handling, loading, or operating any DeWalt Fasteners Engineered by Powers powder actuated tool. That Operators License Card must be on your person anytime you're using a DeWalt Fasteners Engineered by Powers powder actuated tool. It's important that you know that a DeWalt Fasteners Operator License is valid for and only for DeWalt Fasteners Engineered by Powers Tools and for the specific DeWalt Fasteners tool or tools that you are or will be using. Now it's important to note that attempting to handle or operate a powder actuated tool without proper training and licensing could result in serious injury to you as the operator or to bystanders near your work area and could make you subject to select job site safety fines. Now the topics we're going to cover in this training class include the basic elements of PAT safety, cleaning, maintenance, and storage, fastener and powder load selection, and tool operation. Let's start with the basic elements of powder actuated tool safety. Now all DeWalt fasteners engineered by Powers powder actuated tools are low velocity, indirect principle, piston driven systems. The piston rod is free floating but captured inside of the powder actuated tool. When the load ignites, the expanding gas is pushing behind the piston rod, driving it down towards the muzzle where it impacts the fastener and forces the fastener into the base material. That base material is either concrete or steel. Now it's really important that you read the operator's manual front to back before you attempt to use any DeWalt engineered by Powers powder actuated tool. The respective DeWalt powder tool manuals provided within each powder actuated tool kit contain more detailed guidance regarding powder actuated tool usage. Use only fasteners and powder loads designed for the specific tool model. Use of non-powder actuated tool products either powder loads or nails, can create safety hazards and should never be used. A nail that you use to put two pieces of wood together is not the same kind of nail used in powder actuated tools. Don't fire a tool without a fastener. The impact on the work surface could cause serious injury to you as the operator or to bystanders and could seriously damage the tool. Powder actuated tools should never be used in explosive or flammable atmospheres. These are blank ballistic powder, powder loads and as a result all precautions ordinarily used around firearms should be observed when operating any powder actuated tool. Never leave a, a, a loaded tool unattended. Once the tool is loaded, make the fastening or unload the tool and never store the tool with unspent loads still in it. Never place or attempt to close the tool with any part of your hand covering the muzzle end of the tool. If the tool accidentally discharges, the piston 
or the fastener could penetrate your hand, resulting in serious injury. Now, operators and bystanders must wear eye and hearing protection. Also, any other safety equip equipment requirements called out or warranted by the job site must also be used. For example, if the job site requires or warrants that hard hats with full face shield must be used for powder actuated tools, then hard hats with full face shield must be used. Always assume the tool is loaded. Don't place your finger on the trigger of a tool until the muzzle end of the tool is against the work surface and you're ready to make a fastening. Always remove the pins and loads from the tool when the tool is not in use. That would be before taking a break, when cleaning or servicing the tool, and of course, as previously mentioned, when you store the tool. Now never carry powder loads in the same container as fasteners or really any other hard objects. This is to prevent accidental discharge of powder loads. Powder loads for DeWalt fasteners engineered by Powers Tools are rim fire cartridges. So we don't want hard objects and rim fire cartridges to be in the same containers. Always store powder loads in the color coded boxes provided. And never intermix the various power levels. Keep them segregated in clearly identified containers. The power loads should never be used in firearms. In their respective calibers, powder actuated loads are, as a rule, more powerful than the cartridges designed for firearms. And powder actuated tools, powder actuated loads should always be stored under lock and key. And of course, and once again, tools must be unloaded when not in use and when being stored. Now going on with more elements of powder actuated tool safety. Don't load the tool until you're ready to make a fastening. Check the power level of the load before inserting it into the tool and always start with the lowest power level designed for that tool first. Now don't close a powder actuated tool against any kind of a work surface. Powder actuated tools then open need to be closed by hand. We don't open the tool and close it against the work surface. The tool should be manually closed. It is open and manually closed, and it should be closed with your hand facing away from the muzzle to prevent hand injuries and to prevent the possibility of accidental discharge. Now, when operating the tool, you operate it with the, with the tool perpendicular to the work surface at all times, perpendicular to the work surface. Now, you can use a spall guard whenever possible. A spall guard is a manually mounted piece of safety equipment that goes on the muzzle end of the powder actuated tool. The spall guard will limit the possibility of fastener ricochet and help limit spalled concrete fragments from taking flight and causing possible injury to use the operator or to bystanders. And as just mentioned, always perform a test fastening with the weakest load level designed for use in that tool first. If the tool takes green, yellow, and red, for example, then always start with green. If the weakest load green fails to set the fastener satisfactorily, then try the next load level, in this case, yellow, and so on until the proper level is, is attained, a good fastening is made. Now, failure to follow this procedure could cause the fastener to be overpowered. And overpowering a fastener can damage the tool, it can cause piston overdrive, and it can create the possibility of a safety hazard for both you as the operator or for bystanders. Piston overdrive or possible damage to the piston can also be the result of discharging a powder actuated tool against a soft surface. Now, don't fasten into cast iron, tile, glass, brick, or other types of brittle materials, as these materials can shatter and create sharp fragments which may cause some kind of injury. Fastening into a very hard aggregate, very hard concrete, or when a fastener hits a piece of concrete reinforcing bar, 
can cause a powder actuated fastener to bend or fish hook and come out of the work surface. Fastener fish hooking can cause serious injury or death. Now don't fire a tool within three inches of an unsupported edge of concrete base material. And don't fire a tool within a half inch of the edge of steel base material. And never attempt to install a fastener into cracked or spalled areas of concrete. Don't attempt to install fasteners in areas that have been welded or cut with a torch, as these procedures can cause localized hardening of the steel, making it too hard to safely fasten into. Don't fasten through a pre-drilled hole in a fixture unless proper guidance has been provided first. And if you decide not to make a fastening after the tool has been loaded, you must remove the powder load first, followed by the fastener. With regards to semi-automatic tools, the magazine strip will be inside. If you want to unload the tool, you simply grab the strip and pull it out. Never attempt to override any of the safety features of any powder actuated tool. And operators and assistants must post a minimum 8 inch by 10 inch sign with at least 1 inch height letters stating warning, powder actuated tool in use. With regards to cleaning, maintenance, and storage, first, make sure the tool is unloaded. Now, to check the fun functioning of the tool, check it without a powder load or a fastener in the tool. Push the nose of the tool down against the work surface, checking that there is tension on the front fire safety, but the tool does not fire. Release the tension. The tool does not fire. Now, with the nose of the tool released from the work surface, pull the trigger. Notice that no one action without the other will allow that tool to fire. To fire a tool requires both elements to be engaged simultaneously. You have to engage the front fire safety by applying tension and pull the trigger, and then the tool will fire. Now function the unloaded tool several times to ensure that breech parts and firing mechanisms and everything is operating freely before fastening with the tool. And as you can see, it seems to be working perfectly. If you have any questions about the functioning of a tool, refer to the tool operating instruction manual. And if you have any doubts with regards to worn parts, call your local DeWalt fasteners engineered by Powers representative or your local authorized DeWalt fasteners powder actuated tool distributor. With regards to cleaning a powder actuated tool, first, and this is very important, always wear eye protection when cleaning powder actuated tools. Now the piston rod, barrel assembly, and the fastener guide should be cleaned of excess dirt on a daily basis. And while you're cleaning it, check the condition of the piston and the muzzle bushing and the wear parts, making sure that they're not damaged in some way or deformed. Now all the parts should be cleaned with detergent oil and wire brushes that are supplied within your tool kit. Remove the heavy dirt buildup with the brushes and the oil, but after you finish cleaning the tool, Wipe all of the parts thoroughly dry. Wipe them as dry as you can. Excess oil on a powder actuated tool only acts as an agent to collect dust, dirt, and spent powder residue. A general tool maintenance should be performed at six month intervals or more frequently based upon the frequency of tool use. Be sure to check the tool operating instruction manual for details regarding tool maintenance. Next thing I want to talk about is fastener and powder load selection. Now powder actuated fasteners are commonly known as or referred to as powder actuated nails or powder actuated pins. DeWalt fasteners, powder actuated pins, have pre-mounted plastic flutes that hold the pin centered in the tool and provide guidance for the pin prior and during the fastening. DeWalt fasteners engineered by Powers pins threaded studs, and pin assemblies are listed in the DeWalt Fasteners Engineered by Powers Buyer's Guide. Before working with a powder actuated tool, you should conduct a center punch test to determine if the, if the use of powder actuated systems is even appropriate for the base material you're considering. This test is especially important when you're attempting to fasten into metal based materials, extremely hard concrete, brittle materials, or soft masonry type base materials. The test is relatively simple 
and it can help to ensure a safe and successful fastening. Now, be sure to wear the necessary and or required personal protection equipment when performing this test. Now, to perform the test, select the fastener that will be used for this application. Then place the point of the fastener against the pro proposed base materials. Strike the fastener with a single hammer blow. Then examine the point of the fastener. If the point of the fastener is not blunted and the base material has a clear point indentation in it, then this base material is acceptable to proceed with the first test installation. A use of a powder actuated system is not recommended if the following occurs during the center punch test. If the fastener point is blunted, this indicates that the base material is too hard. If the base material cracks or shatters, well, obviously that means the base material is too brittle. And if using a single average hammer blow, the fastener penetrates the base material easily, this indicates that that base material is just too soft. Now, after conducting the center punch test, the best way to check the base material is to set several fastenings, but do it using the lowest level of load available for the tool first. Now, with regards to fastener length selection in concrete, now powder actuated tools are designed to make fastenings in concrete and steel base materials only. For permanent applications using powder actuated pins in concrete, first, determine the thickness of the fixture you want to fasten and add to this the required embedment or penetration into the base material. This will be the fastener shank length required. The typical concrete base material penetration in average concrete, depending on the fastener type, is three quarters of an inch to an inch and a quarter. The typical steel base material penetration is a half inch, with through penetration being acceptable when the steel base material is thinner than a half inch. And so in summary, and perhaps as a rule of thumb for you, when fastening into concrete, take the thickness of whatever you want to fasten and add three quarters of an inch to an inch and a quarter, depending on the fastener type. For steel, take the, the thickness of whatever it is you want to fasten and add a half inch. And that is the overall fastener length required. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about base material thicknesses, because this is important. Concrete base material should be at least three times as thick as the fastener embedment penetration. If the concrete base material is too thin. It can break out the back side of the concrete. This can create a dangerous condition from flying concrete pieces off the back side of the concrete member. Steel base material should be a minimum thickness of an eighth of an inch. And so things like sheet metal, for example, would not be a suitable base material because it's much too thin. Now I want to step into powder load selection. Use of the proper power level is critical to the success of powder actuated fastening. Just a reminder, to select the proper power level, always make a test firing by starting with first the lowest power level recommended for the tool you intend to use. Now, don't use any other type of load other than the ones suited for your particular tool. Be sure to use only the caliber of load designed to fit the tool you intend to use. Failure to follow these kinds of instructions can cause accidental load discharge, could do damage to the tool, and may cause serious injury to you as the operator or to bystanders. Now, the power level or strength of powder actuated loads is identified by using a color code and number system, as shown on the table behind me. Now, power level 1, gray, is the lowest level, and power level 6, purple, is the highest. Now, it's important to note that as the number increases, the power level also increases. A combination of numbers and colors are used in case the operator, you, has color deficient vision. Instead of using the color, you can use the number to identify the load level. Now, the power level number of DeWalt fasteners engineered by Powers Power Loads is marked on each box. The power level is also indicated by the color on the box label. 
It's important to note that the color of each load will also be on the tip of each individual power load, whether they are individual or they are on a magazine strip. In the case of 27 caliber loads, the strip will also match the color of the load. 27 caliber loads, the strip magazine will match the color of the load. I say that because 25 caliber load strips will not match the color load. In order to better identify 25 caliber loads from 27 caliber loads, 25 caliber load magazine strips will always be white or beige. The next thing I want to talk about is, is tool operation. Now the first element within tool operation is inserting the pin. Now remember, to make powder actuated tool fastenings, first make sure that you and all bystanders have donned the necessary and required personal protective safety equipment. Now for single shot tools, place the fastener point out into the end of the muzzle bushing. And do this until the pre-mounted plastic flute fits snugly inside of the muzzle. I never use fasteners that are longer than those listed in the fastener section of the respective powder tool operating instruction manual. Now after the pin is installed, and only after the pin is installed, open the tool, remember, palm out, open the tool, and insert the correct powder load. If it's the first installation test, you always start with the lowest level for this tool first. The lowest level that was designed for the tool you intend to use. After the load is installed, close the tool. The tool is now ready to make a fastening. For semi-automatic tools, the first and most important thing to consider is that you and all of those around you need to have donned the necessary and or required personal protective equipment. Now first, importantly, always point the tool in a safe direction, away from you and away from those around you. Then in one movement, and with your palm facing away from you, slide the barrel all the way forward and all the way back against the stop. You need to, be, you need to pull it all the way forward and all the way back. This motion resets the piston to make sure that it's in the proper position for fastening. That's important because there will be a loss of power if the piston is improperly positioned. Now once again, like we did with single shot tools, place the fastener, point out, into the muzzle bushing until it fits snugly inside. Continuing with tool operation, insert the fastener point out until it's snug in the tool. Next then, insert the powder load into the bottom of the tool handle starting with the lowest power level designed for that tool model first. The strip should be inserted completely and should be flush with the bottom of the handle. When the strip is flush, the first power load in the magazine strip is in position to be used. Now always insert the strip from the bottom of the handle up, not from the top down. To make a fastening, first make sure that you as the operator and, and all of those around you are wearing the necessary and or required personal protection equipment. And as a matter of added safety and, and perhaps as a best practice, Gloves should be worn when using powder actuated tools. Next, place the tool against the work surface. Now for purposes of demonstration, I'm going to use an unloaded tool. Hold the tool firmly with two hands and completely depress the barrel. Then squeeze the trigger and the tool will fire. Always hold the tool perpendicular to the work surface. Also, if you hold the tool firmly against the work surface, you'll avoid any excessive recoil. Now to pre prepare for the next fastening, insert the next fastener facing out. Once the fastener is inserted, then cycle the tool. And in that order, fastener first, then cycle the tool. You repeat this procedure then for all subsequent firings. When the 10 load strip has been completely fired, you can simply remove it by pulling it from the top of the tool body. Once you remove the strip, check to make sure that there are no unspent live loads still in there. If there are, reinsert the strip 
and pull the strip from the top, counting the number of times you pass through a load station. Through that process, you can effectively use any and all unspent loads. And here's what I'm saying. What if we pull the strip out and we see that the third load is still live? We slip the strip back into the tool. Number one is already in the combustion chamber. We pull the strip up, there's number two, and there's number three. That way we can effectively use all the powder actuated loads in a strip. Now it's very important to note that unspent live powder, wet, powder actuated loads should never be left unattended and should never be left on or in a job site work area. Unspent rim fire live loads lying on the floor of a work area is a very serious potential safety hazard. Now, in the event a load doesn't discharge after the trigger is pulled, you must perform the misfire procedure. Now, let's assume that the tool is loaded and there is a fastener in it. We put the tool down on the work surface, we pull the trigger, and nothing happens. You leave the tool there for 30 seconds. You leave it there for 30 seconds. You're leaving it there in case there's, there's some kind of slow burning primer. After 30 seconds, you release the front safety. The tool will recock itself and depress the tool against the work surface once again and pull the trigger. If the, the tool still does not discharge, wait another 30 seconds with the tool on the work surface. After 30 second wait, carefully remove the entire load from the tool, all of the strip, and dispose of the entire strip in a can of water or a bucket of non-flammable fluids. Never attempt to force or pry an unspent load out of a tool. Also, never attempt to unload or disassemble a jammed, stuck, or broken tool as improper handling may cause it to discharge, striking you, the operator, or a bystander. A jammed or broken tool must be removed from service immediately, tagged as broken, and locked up. Be careful to keep a jammed or broken tool pointed in a safe direction at all times. Then call your local DeWalt fasteners engineered by Powers representative or your local authorized DeWalt fasteners distributor for assistance. Now with regards to assembly and disassembly of DeWalt fasteners engineered by Powers powder actuated tools, please consult the operating instruction manual for tool specific procedures. Now it's important to note that as you disassemble a given tool, any damaged or deformed parts must be replaced. They cannot be retooled, reworked, or simply hammered back into their original shape and reinstalled in the tool. Now, in the operator's instruction manual, there are some other items, other topics, such as a complete parts list for the powder actuated tools, a parts schematic, and select troubleshooting hints. And so in closing, this training class has been summarized from the DeWalt Fasteners Engineered by Powers Powder Actuated Fastening Tool Operating Instruction Manuals. It's important to note that this video does not in any way replace the need for a complete review and reading of the operator instruction manuals specific to the tool you plan to use. So refer to the operating instruction manual for more descriptive and detailed information regarding the use of powder actuated tools. With that then, this concludes the DeWalt Engineered by Powers Powder Actuated Tool Training Class. And it's the first of several steps needed for you to become qualified, licensed DeWalt Engineered by Powers Powder Actuated Tool Operators. Thank you.